Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Put your hands together. Begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, lift the name of God. The King of Kings, uh, the Lord of Lords, and the Great I Am. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God. I say praise God.
to worship together here with each other, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, God. We give you glory and honor and praise tonight because you're such a worthy God. Father, we thank you for these faithful servants, God, who serve us faithfully, God. They don't complain, God. We thank you for them, God. We pray, God, whatever their heart's desire is, that you will grant it, God. We pray, God, that you will touch their bodies and give them the strength that they need to carry on, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for them, God. We thank you for their example, my God. Father, we pray for each and every one of us that has gathered here today, God. You know our situations. You know our circumstances. You know what we stand in need of tonight, God. And we pray, Lord, that you will meet our needs tonight. Lord, we pray for the man of God who will bring the word of God. Touch him, God. Touch him one more time, God. Use him mightily tonight, God. Oh, God, we just thank you one more time. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the privilege of being able to worship and honor you tonight in this place at this time, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. We ask that you just have your way in the rest of the service. Do anything you want to do, God. We won't stand in the way, God, but we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, God. We ask these things in Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank God for that prayer. Amen. 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 Jeff and Pastor Kerm. Yes. Our relationship started way before I even knew they were going to be pastors wow. here at, uh, at PCCI. And it just grew from there. I, uh, <laughs> they were telling us that we needed to have accountability partners. And so Pastor Kerm kept coming to my mind. And I was like, I don't really know her. You know, but I reached out to her. And I asked her to be my accountability partner. And she said, so you, you, does that mean that, uh, that you're going to be my partner? She said, because you know, I, I said, no, it's okay. I just need 
want you to be my accountability partner. And we talked at one time and then didn't talk for another year. Because <laughs> I don't think I really wanted no accountability at that time. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. And then when they kept being on us about accountability partners, I was like, Lord, I can't go back to this lady again. And, and he kept pressing me to speak to Pastor Kerm. And when I did, it just really grew and blossomed from there. And she has been such a blessing in my life. She has kept me out of fights and just all kinds of things. She's a blessing to me. And Pastor Jeff is just all the way from uh, the conventions when when he would be playing at the conventions and he was like, you singing in the choir? I'm like, no, I don't think I'm gonna sing this year. Oh yeah, you singing in the choir this year. And so we, we've had that relationship. So I love them. There is nothing that I wouldn't do for them. Nothing. That's how much I love them and they have been such a blessing to me. I love you both. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. I'm Sister Shante, and I am Pastor Jeff and Pastor Carmen Long Lost Daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I just put myself in the family, so what's up, bro? What's up, sis? How y'all doing? My hey, Liv in the back, you know. Um, I just want to say um, I am very blessed to be here, a part of our um, the B Top family. Um, when I first came here, I think maybe eight years ago, um, we were sitting at the church in Belleville on Sumter, off of Sumter, and I want to say I sat for like maybe three and a half months, just sat there. Nobody knew who I was. I didn't say nothing to nobody because I was at a point in my life where I needed to be poured into. I, I did a lot of singing and all of this and that, but I, I was at a point where I needed to be poured into. And it seemed like every, every Sunday, Pastor Jeff was preaching about something that I was dealing with or I was going through. And it just ministered to me in a, in a way that I, it just changed my life. But so many times as leaders, you're working in ministry, but you're not fully getting all that you need because you're trying to make sure, you know, this is done and that is done. And I'm like, okay, God, I've been through, I have been through some hurt or whatever. And I just sat there and I listened. And my son at the time, Malik, he a big boy now. But one day, Pastor Jeff was out in the, um, he was preaching this sermon called Bounce Back, Bounce Back. He said, look at your neighbor and say, Malik had to be like maybe eight, nine months, almost a year, maybe the case. And he busts out and says, bounce back, bounce back. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And I can tell that my children were into the service because when Brother Will and them and all the flaggers and the dancers were up and they were going forth with their flags, his eyes was just moving, going everywhere that was going. I can say he was learning how to be a gentleman, opening up the doors for the ladies. That's what he do now, you know? So I know that he's getting great teaching, but I just want to say I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I'm kind of tongue twisted right now because I still smell chicken. Um, <laughs> Something downstairs is creeping up here, and I'm getting a little bit, you know, beside myself. But, no. <laughs> but I just, I really appreciate you, too. I really show, I, I'm so thankful that God has blessed us with not, I can say, not phony leaders. Yes. Yeah. They are very pure. Yes. They're, you ever heard somebody say something about living a lifestyle, and it speaks, the action speaks louder than the words? Oh, yeah. yeah. Without words, they exemplify what a real leader looks like. Yes. And I can say, I've been to churches. I've, I, was, I was brought up in church. But I, when I came to B-Top, I felt a love like never before. I, I tell everybody that I speak to, if there was people over there talking or anything, you wouldn't even know it. Because that's how much love that they show here. That's what drew me. And I still feel that same. It's not fake. It's not phony. It's real love. And I so thank you. And I appreciate you. Because even the things that I have gone through. 
even the things that I've gone through this past year, it has been hard, but I thank God that they were here to be able to hear me and understand where I was coming from and never tell me one time, well, yeah, you need to just throw that away, throw that away. I waited, I waited on God. And they were right there to support me. And I so thank you so much for your support. Thank you. That's the kind of pastor we have. Yeah. I said, that's the kind of pastor we have. And when they came up here, amen, uh, we'll have Sister Erica to come up, and then we're going to uh, end with uh, the sons. <laughs> amen. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, VTOP, and visitors, and everyone. It's so good to see you, and it's so good to be here. Um, as Pastor Hughley said, our first Sunday, we were visiting at the church on Belleville, and it was Mother's Day, and my husband, and Pastor Carm preached, it was Mother's Day, and my husband thought Pastor Carm was the pastor of the church, and he was like, she can preach, and he thought Pastor Jeff was a really good organist, pianist, and <laughs> And then when he found out that Pastor Jeff was actually the pastor of the church, he was like, well, we got to come back next week, but he better bring it. <laughs> and at the time, we were looking for a church home. And our children um, are grown now, but they were 14, 11, and 8 years old. And when my husband asked me what I wanted for Mother's Day, I said, I want to go to church because I knew that we needed a church home. And I didn't know what we were going to get. Wow. And what we got were the best teachers, preachers, and leaders that I've ever known. Yes. Wow. And that have been a complete blessing to our family. And you all will forever be part of our family. And I knew very early on that my children were listening and they were paying attention. And one day we were at dinner, and I don't remember what the conversation was, but Darian, our oldest daughter, she was probably 15 at the time, and she said, Dad, I think you need to do like Pastor Jeff said and be a worshiper and not a worrier. <laughs> and I knew, I knew right then, I was like, oh yeah, this is exactly where we need to be. And, um, and so we've been on this journey with you all since you've been here, and I cannot tell you how grateful we are for your presence in our life, for your covering over our lives, because we've been through some very difficult and challenging circumstances, and you've been there with us yes. every step of the way. Yes. Every step of the way. Fasting and praying for us, covering us, and we appreciate and love you. Um, and I also have to say, I especially, too, appreciate Pastor Karn for that Motivated to Move Friday Night yes. Dance Class <laughs> that, you know, kept me going during times when I was going through stuff. I had something to look forward to and, and some fellowship and, and keeping myself healthy and moving um, and relevant at parties and, and family reunions. So. <laughs> So again, um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. With you, I hope you know how much we love you, but how much this entire church um, loves you and everything that you've done for us. It is not forgotten. Yes. Um, and we see you, and we thank you, and we pray for you. And may God continue to shower you with His favor and give you peace and give you strength. Amen. 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 We want to end uh, with the eldest son and uh, Caleb. You come on up here too. <laughs> he got to hit the word, the action word. Y'all come on, come on up. <laughs> he ain't gonna hit the word. <laughs> Y'all come on up here. We we got to end with them with the seed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to do this without getting emotional. Y'all know sometimes I am. Uh, well, I've been, I've been around the, the pastors since 1987. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, June 11th of 1987. I know the date. And, uh, no, but, you know, one thing, I was talking to my mother a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, um, I told her, we, we were talking about, she was asking, now, for those of you who don't know, when I was in school, um, I, I don't want to say I was a problem child, <laughs> but I was just misunderstood. Uh -huh. Misunderstood. The teachers, the teachers and some of the other students, they misunderstood me a lot. Uh -huh. um, so when they would call my parents and things like that, they would always say, well, aren't you all pastors? <laughs> And my mother, we were talking about it, my mother said, you know, she would always wonder, who told y'all that? Like, you know, and that's the thing. I would always tell everyone, my parents are pastors, because I was always proud of them. I was always proud of them for, from, from day one. When my father, I kind of vaguely remember, as a five-year-old could, I remember the day we moved to Cleveland in 92. Uh, had, a, had a brand new Honda Accord. And my mom made my dad drive the whole way. <laughs> because she was pregnant with this guy here. And uh, I, I, remember, I remember it well because the driving through the, my dad woke me up driving through the, um, the Rocky Mountains. It was, like seven, it was like seven or six or seven in the morning and the sun was coming up. And I was like, yo, this is nice. This is beautiful. As a five year old, you know, I'm five. And we got here, we got to Cleveland, Halloween night. Um, and I remember I jumped on my bed because uh, the movies had got it there. And then, you know, we went to church and everything. And I remember sitting on the front row because my mother made me sit there because I was misunderstood. <laughs> and uh, the first Sunday, I just remember just sitting there like in awe that my father was the leader of all these people. And then, as I got older, I just used to sit there in awe as my father led people. I, I told my dad a few, maybe a year ago or something, uh, I'm 35 now, and I have a family of my own. I could not imagine having the family and adding on the responsibility of pastoring the church. Couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine it. And he was doing it at 29. He started at 29. When I was 29, I couldn't imagine being a pastor. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized the weight that was really on their shoulders. And, you know, my mother, my mother now is one of my best friends. And my father, I'm, this is my last name, my bad. <laughs> I always tell people um, I was fortunate that I didn't have to look at athletes and entertainers as my role model. All right. Because I have my dad. All right. My dad has, from day one, he has shown, I'm going to speak for you. But he has shown us how to be men, men of God first, how to be men. He's shown me how to be a husband, how to be a father. And I say it often, and I, and I say it proudly. If I become half the man that you are, I'll, I'll be a great man. I'm proud to be a Richardson. Cleveland, my mom was pregnant with me, and they moved in October, they came, they went to Cleveland in October 92, I was born in March of 93, so um, 
Church of God of Cleveland was the first church that I remember going to, that I was born into. And um, my parents have just been beyond awesome and amazing uh, to me and to so many people. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. They are just great and phenomenal. And um, I'm still working on myself, still trying to find sort of my way. Um, but they've never left me, they've never let me down, they've never failed me, they've never given up on me, they've never thrown me away. And um, yeah, I just, I love them very, very much. And I hope that they know that, and I hope that um, I can give back some, because I'm never gonna be able to give back all of it, but I hope one day that I can give back some of what they've given me, the, um, the confidence, the love, the support, um, just, yeah, so I love my parents very much, and I want to thank everybody, I guess we're finished, I want to thank everybody for coming out and helping us celebrate, so. Beautiful, beautiful, you have another song, that's why we're coming with the word, we got one more, one more, okay, one more songs, and then we're coming with the word. Basically, don't work. <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's receive the choir. Amen. Pastor, you coming up? Yes. Okay. All right. Don't y'all get mad with me? <laughs> <laughs> this is our first time. Our first uh, time that we've been given permission on one date, uh, past occupancy permit to be able to worship here. And I know that there's some of you that would think or wanted me not to have to do anything, but I told them that first Sunday I'm gonna be doing something with the, with the music in the morning and in the evening. <laughs> because this is a part of my expression yes. of, of, of gratitude to God for what he's done Amen. for us, just being in this building. Yes. Amen. 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 So y'all forgive me. But I have so many yes. reasons. Yes. Y'all help me uh, appreciate the, the choir.
many reasons to rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say, thank you, Jesus. Give God thanks. Give God praise. Give God honor. Be worthy. I say, my God is worthy.
eternal God, our Father, how thankful and how grateful we are to you for this another expression of your love toward us and for us. We're thankful for another visible reminder of your great grace on our behalf. And we're thankful and we're grateful that tonight finds us not in a bar, not in some place of ill repute, but we're thankful that tonight finds us within sacred space in the house of God, the sanctuary of the Lord. We thank you for worship. It's been very warm and very real. We have felt your presence in a powerful way. We thank you for this occasion, for this man and woman of God, and how you have for three decades now led and guided them. And so I pray, Lord, that as we come to the preaching of your word, that you would stand up inside your preacher you would take my mind and think with it, but most of all, you would take my mouth and speak through it so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you alone are my rock and my fortress. You have become my best friend and my deliverer in the wonderfully sweet but still very strong name of Jesus and every believing heart shall amen. Come on, give God praise as you go to your seats in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let me try it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God. And even on tonight, he is worthy of our worship and worthy of our praise. Thank you, uh, Pastor Euclid, for your kind and gracious introduction. It, um, I appreciate it. If my mother were alive, she would have believed every word of it. <laughs> every single word of it. Uh, I salute uh, the preacher from this morning, my dear friend and brother. Give it up for Dr. Angel Young Cruz. Amen. The, uh, angel of the cross <laughs> and I love him his lovely wife so glad to see her and their precious daughter it's so good give God praise for them all right um, I'm going to ask that young brother who was up singing in the back they're working now I tell you you are a man of multiple gifts or a brother with who needs a lot of jobs I don't know what your name is I'm going to ask you to just give me a little monitor, little speaker there. I've had a long week and I don't have much voice left. Keep going. I'm going to buy you McDonald's and get you Mickey Sides. There you go. Right there. That's good. That's good. Give me my hand. That was nothing. You did that real good. I'm going to take you with me around the country. We're going to take this show on the road. So happy to see Dr. Fontenot, my brother, here today. I don't know where my sister is, but I'm glad to see you. All right. Oh, she, she's on? All right. You tell her I send love to her. And uh, Aunt Connie, my sister, I love you so much. Glad to see you. Oh, I'm just glad to be back with y'all in Michigan. Glad to see y'all. I'm happy to see my nephews. Uh, both of them look so good and sound so good. And what a marvelous tribute they paid to their mother. Yeah. And, you celebrate them. and my niece in law. <laughs> and the children. I'm so glad to see them. Um, now, I've said something about all of y'all, so you know you're special. Let me talk about the honorees now. My brother and my sister. I want you to celebrate Pastor Jeff and Pastor Felix. Now, come on, I want y'all to celebrate them. Yeah. There you go, that's what I'm talking about. Celebrate them, celebrate them. They deserve, they deserve every accolade that could be heaped upon them. And it's been my joy, 
Uh, Jay said he's known them since uh, 1987. And I think I've known them longer than that. And I remember when I first met them in, as he would say, the late Bishop Benjamin Franklin Reed Pop would say, Los Angeles. And uh, I have watched their lives and they are as near and dear to my family and I as if we shared the same blood. And you know how much we love you. The only reason First Lady is not with me, she's in Sumter, South Carolina. Uh, her aunt's funeral was yesterday and so she is there, her and Pop and Jossie and Yoli, everybody's down in South Carolina uh, for Aunt Ida's obsequies. And, uh, but they send love, and Pug sends love. He wanted to come, but I reminded him he has school in the morning. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep you long, it's 6.23, and uh, I'm hoping that I'll be at whatever restaurant they gonna take me to at 7.23. <laughs> Hope springs eternal in the breast. Yeah. Pastor Colin texted me. She said, do you want us to have something for you? And I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, I'm going to preach, run in the office, wash up real good, and uh, change, head straight to the airport. I said, when I get there, I have a Starbucks Colin, I'm going to give me a sandwich at Starbucks, give me something to drink, and I'll be fine. Got to Starbucks. Best laid plans of mice and men always there. I got to Starbucks, they didn't have sandwich number one. And so I had to suffice on a Danish. So I've been running on a Danish and I was tired of it. So uh, I, like Liz Taylor told her fifth husband, I ain't gonna keep you long. I know Dr. Dela Cruz preached the horns off the Billy Bill this morning. So anything after this is greed, not need. You don't need no more words, you just greedy if you want something. First Kings chapter 17. Normally I would ask you to stand and honor the word of God. I felt so bad for the praise team. Y'all were standing up so long. I just I said, I hope they got off good shoes. So I'm going to let you sit down uh, because I'm going to read a lengthy passage of scripture. First Kings chapter 17, commencing at verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord then came unto him, saying, Give me hence, and turn me eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went, did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, give me the Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, 
As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it, prepare it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, unto the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Thus far God's word. Amen. I want to preach for about 18, 19, 20, 23, 25 minutes. I want to preach about how God takes care of his preacher. How God takes care of his preacher. Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, who um, was the first African American to graduate from Harvard University with a PhD, wrote a book over a hundred years ago now entitled The Souls of Black Folk. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, some of you in reading that book will remember that Dr. Du Bois argues several things about the experience, how shall I say, of African Americans on the continent of North America, brought here on slave ships, herded and treated like animals and cattle, deprived of who we are innately and intuitively, intrinsically, our humanity and our sense of being. And uh, Dr. Du Bois argues that there are several things that separate uh, the religion, uh, he calls it, Dr. Del Cruz, the religion of the slave from the religion of the slave master. Um, if I had time, I'd unpack that. That the two are not synonymous. I'm going to try that one more time. That there is a difference between the religion of the slave and the religion of the slave master. They are not synonymous. I don't know why y'all still sitting there because Dr. Du Bois wrote that a hundred years ago and guess what y'all, it still ain't. And, and part of what we're seeing, I don't want to stay on it too long, but part, Lady Charlene, part of what we're seeing just a few days from election here in Michigan and in Ohio and around the world, around the country rather, what we're seeing is the evidence of the difference in the religion of the oppressor as opposed to the religion of the oppressed. I feel like preaching that. And all you gotta do is watch for these buzzwords, uh, these dog whistles, that the religion of the oppressor is always peddling and pushing. Uh, they like to talk about right to life uh, as long as the life is in the womb. Y'all get cry on me. But as soon as that life comes out, especially if it's a black life, they do everything they can legislatively and legally to snuff out the life they say they care so much about. They like to talk about states' rights, uh, but what you don't remember is that's what George Crawley Wallace did down there in Alabama when he said we don't want the federal government determining what we do in Alabama. We ought to have states' rights. Y'all ain't helping me. Uh, ain't nothing new under the sun, Solomon said, and all we're seeing is a replay of the same old playlist. Dr. Du Bois said there's a difference, I feel like preaching it now, between the religion of the slave and the religion of the slave master, between the oppressor and the oppressed. 
One of the things Dr. Du Bois said is that uh, in the religion of the slave master and the religion of the slave, the religion of the oppressor and the religion of the press is what he called the frenzy. Now, the frenzy, the frenzy, for all of y'all bougie folk, is the shout. Y'all ain't helping me. Uh, the boy said, uh, over in the big church, in the big house, with the slave master, but nobody shouted. They were sterile and dry and dead and dull, and you never heard anybody raise their voice. And they had a gothic building. They had a marvelous sanctuary, pipe organ. They were singing European uh, songs and written by Beethoven and Bach and Mendelssohn, but they didn't have no life in them. But down in the brush harbor, the slaves were shouting and dancing, doing that circle dance as they rejoiced together in the God. I wish I had a church up in here of their salvation. I thought I'd just stop long enough to parenthetically park on the side of that road and raise a question. How is it that our forebears in slavery could shout and hear y'all all the night with driving Beamers and Lexus and Teslas and can't give God any praise? But every now and then, when you think of our good God's being, where God has brought you from, you want to just go ahead and haul off and give him some praise. Here's why, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, the name of the Lord, where did you be praised? Dr. Du Bois, and I tell you all he had a PhD from Harvard. Dr. Du Bois said that one of the things that separated the religion of the slave from the religion of the slave master to the religion of the oppressed or from the religion of the oppressed was the frenzy that on any given Sunday, at any given moment, them slaves was liable to break out in a dance and start giving God praise. One other thing I'll move on that Dr. Du Bois said um, was a, a line of demarcation between the slave master and the slave, the oppressor and the oppressed, I gotta hurry up, uh, is uh, the preacher. Uh, now I would argue the second thing he said, but I ain't got time for it, was the music. He said over in the big church they were singing all that European stuff, you know, and uh, but down the street, yeah. across the field, they were singing like y'all were singing tonight. So many reasons. Yeah. Okay, now, 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 now they're going to sing that up in the big house. But, but, but folk kiss by nature's son. And I would argue sociologically and theologically that it's an amazing thing after all the hell we've been through. We can still say I got so many reasons. God, I wish I had a church of you. Can't can nobody do it like we can to look back over the landscape of our life and living and all the trauma that, okay, y'all ain't, all the trauma that, I, I mean, come on, y'all, black folks should have committed mass homicide or suicide. All the trauma we've been through, but ain't God good that we can look back and say, all that I've been through does not compare to all that God has done. But okay, I got so many reasons. I double dog day, you look at the neighbors, I got so many reasons. So many reasons to praise him. So many reasons to thank him. So many reasons to give him praise. Dr. Du Bois said it's, it, it's the frenzy, it's the music, and then he said it's the preacher. Uh, he said, anybody, in fact, if you go back and read it, I know you read it, but read it again. Uh, Dr. Du Bois said that the, the Negro, that's what they called us back then, the colored preacher, the Negro preacher, was the most unique character ever invented on American soil. <laughs> he said, ain't nobody like the black preacher. That was true a hundred years ago, and guess what is true right now? And I know, I know, I'm watching that clock. I know, I know, I know, I know that some of y'all castigate the preacher, criticize the preacher, critique the preacher, but can I just say this on my way to heaven? If it hadn't been for the black preacher, we wouldn't have made it as a people. 
Uh, you got, I know y'all call him a charlatan. I know you call him a clown. I know you call him a crook. But every preacher ain't a charlatan. Every preacher's not a clown. Every preacher's not a crook. I'm waiting on somebody to say amen. And if you got me, just look over there and see that preacher sitting right there. And y'all know he's not a charlatan. He's not a clown. He's not a crook. I wish I had help up in here. God still has some preachers and some prophets who cry loud and spare not. The boy said the preacher, the preacher, the black preacher, the slave preacher, brings a word of hope. It's the genius. I gotta leave this alone, but it's the genius. Thank you. It's the genius. It's the genius of black preaching. Uh, but but really, it's the genius of the black religious experience uh, that we can take what was heaped on us in the misuse and misinterpretation, the eisegetical abuse done in the scripture to keep us enslaved, and we could flip that script. Y'all ain't helping me. That when they were telling us slaves obey your master, that we were descendants of a cursed race and all that stuff, we, the Negro preacher, the slave preacher, went down to the brush harbor and reminded us that God delivered Daniel, God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God brought Israel up out of Egypt, and if he did it for them, he could do it for us, and that we were made in the image and the likeness of God with the Imago. They stamped on us that we were not junk or inferior, but we were sun kissed with melanin plus to spit going up in me. And God still loved us in spite of our current condition and situation. It, it's, it's the beauty of the black church, the black preacher that's amazing. It's got us over. That's why I don't understand the Negroes now. So sedity, so sophisticated, don't want to come to church. Now y'all have got booze. You want to go to the club, you want to play golf, want to play tennis on Sunday morning. You better bring your hips back to church. Right? It's, it's, uh, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. It's, uh, it's that idea, it's that idea about the preacher that just captured my attention. Um, because what the boys said about the Negro, the slave, the colored preacher, really isn't new to him. It's right there uh, in, in, in the text. 1 Kings chapter 17. It just goes to show that God has something special for the preacher. Okay, y'all got real quiet and cool. See, all y'all just got this. See how y'all shut down on me? Now, I didn't, I didn't say you wasn't somebody. I didn't. God knows you are. I mean, y'all are lovely. Y'all are wonderful. I didn't say you're not. What I'm saying is that there's something about God's man and God's woman that makes them not better but different okay y'all ain't helping me y'all ain't and, and, and here it is here it is i think it's because god never allows anybody to be in his debt without paying them back okay let me see let me see if I can what i'm trying to say uh, if i pick it up if i put it down will you pick it up uh, here it is, here it is. See, Del Cruz, Del Cruz is a brilliant brother. He could be a sociologist, he could be an a anthropologist, he could be an ideologist, he won't be because the brother grew up. Uh, but God laid his hand on him and made him a preacher. Y'all yeah. already saw that joker there. It could be a maestro or a musician. He could be anything. I mean, that brother could command top dollar doing what he does. I mean, he does stuff by accident we can't even do on purpose. He just be doing it, you know? And yet God called him. Y'all heard the story first to Cleveland. Okay, Dwight, pray, Dr. Father. No, I'm, I, why can't I preach and never get in trouble? Here it is. Here it is. First to Cleveland. First, I know the church. I know that church. First to Cleveland, and they didn't appreciate you. And yet, you're going to start another church. Then you came here to Michigan, up north. And you know what you had to go through. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here today. And all the stuff you had to deal with these last several years in the building and out of the building, trying to find, y'all ain't helping me, and folk leaving and folk dying, and 
money not coming in, and yet you've been faithful to all of it. God never lets you owe. You know it will help me. God will never let you be in debt to him and he not be able to pay you back. Okay. God looks out for the preacher in an unusual way. Okay, I thought this was anniversary for 30 years and y'all looking at me like a cow looking at a new fish. The reason why we're here tonight is because this couple and that man are precious in the sight of God and they have a promise from God that doesn't belong to anybody else. Can I preach it like I feel it? Come, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. In the words of my grandma, before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Here it is. Here it is, here it is. You have the promise of God's presence. You have the promise of God's protection. And you have the promise of God's power because you said yes to him. Yes, not knowing how much this was going to cost you. God, I feel like preaching up here. I'm on a, did I tell y'all I'm on assignment tonight? Yes, not knowing the price of yes. Yes, not knowing how you would have to suffer and sacrifice for the yes. Y'all ain't helping me. And yet, in spite of Cleveland and Michigan, I thought I'd come tonight to tell you that God is not through with you, and God has not forgotten you, and God remembers he still owes you. Uh, I feel like preaching tonight. I feel like preaching tonight. Come here, come here, come here. In the text, in the text, in the text. The preacher. The preacher, the preacher, the preacher, the preacher goes to the king. I've been arguing all day long about preachers speaking truth to power, being prophetic. And uh, the preacher goes to the king and says, here's how it's going to go down. There won't be do or rain till I say so. And then he walks out, leaves the Oval Office and walks out. And goes on back to wherever he's staying, Holiday Inn, Red Roof Inn, wherever he's staying. And sure enough, sure enough, that happens. And it's pretty bad, John. It's pretty bad. And the preacher's struggling. God, y'all ain't with me. And God said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the brook Cherry and hang out there. And I'm going to send ravens to feed you. That's the first thing I want you to see. That God takes care of his preacher in places never experienced. Mm. Go to go to Cherith. Go to Zarephath. Go to places you've never experienced. You from Pennsylvania. Went to California. Then God bring you to Cleveland. You ain't never experienced. Then you come to Michigan, you've never experienced Michigan. Y'all ain't helping me. Sounds to me like you following that prophet, going to Cherith and Zarephath, places you never experienced. God, I feel like preaching that right there. But here's what I like about the God we serve. The God we serve is never bound by the place we are because the place we are is often the place he chooses to bless us in spite of how it looks. All right, all right, y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm by myself. I can do it. Here, I'm a big boy. I can do it. Do I have anybody up in here tonight who found yourself on a job, in a school, in a situation that you had never experienced before? You didn't know how you were gonna make it, but God made a way out of no way because God specializes in things, I feel like preaching that, that seem impossible. And he can do what no other power, what the Holy Ghost power can do. God takes care of his preacher in a place never experienced. You were in Iowa. What in the blue places is a Puerto Rican boy from New York 
doing in Iowa? Y'all ain't gonna help me. God leads in mysterious ways. Now, places you have never experienced. Here's the second thing. I'm almost good. God takes care of his preacher through people you never expected. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to shout just because I know what I'm about to say. If, 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 if you look at the text, it's the most amazing. He says, now you go down, you go down to the brook Jared, and I'm going to send ravens to feed you. And, and, and he does, he does. But, but here's the thing. Here's Caleb J. Here's the wrinkle in the chitlin. Ravens, ravens are dirty birds. They're, they're predatory. Okay, 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 okay. They, they are not birds that ought to be domesticated. And yet God makes those birds defy their natural tendency and become chefs and waiters for the man of God. I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. I, I don't know why y'all still sitting there. I'm preaching as good as I can this late at night. I guess what I'm trying to tell you that God will use some unlikely folk to bless your life. Do I have anybody in b top who can look back over your life and you are amazed at the folk God used to bless you. I have brought somebody still here. No, 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 no. God, God works through people that it's really unexpected. Uh -huh. yes, God. He, uh, he uses a widow woman and he uses ravens. Y'all yeah. Yeah. ain't with me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Pastor Jeff, I, I wanted to come by your 30 year tell you that, that God's still going to do that for you. Okay, 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 I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to say it first, then I'm going to leave it alone. Did you notice that he says, I have commanded birds to feed you, I've commanded the widow to feed you. Okay, I'm going to, here it is, here it is, get ready, here it is. Some of y'all, God's been telling you that you got to step up. Okay. Okay, 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 look at me. No, come on, stay with me, stay with me. Because I heard all that stuff y'all was talking. How much you love, how much they sacrifice, how much they give. I, I was about to just have a stroke sitting right there. I'm sitting, I was sitting there thinking, oh God, oh God, please don't let my face show it. Oh God, please, please. Because my wife said, everything's on my face. I listen to you, and I know y'all mean it. You know what I want to know? Why? Why they got to struggle so hard? Why are they going to sacrifice so much? Why? I know you like it, but why? Why can't y'all take care of it? Why? Why? Don't tell me in this church God hasn't spoken to somebody about blessing the man of God. Boy, it's getting real I get, thank you. No, come on, y'all. I've commanded a widow. God never has a preacher with a need that he doesn't speak to somebody about meeting that need. Okay. And you can be glad they're sacrificing and they're serving and they're doing. I, I, I was down with it. I heard it. But in my heart, I want to say, why? Why? Why can't we have another testimony? Oh, it's getting real quiet up in here. Why can't we have another story to tell next anniversary? Why can't we say to them, this year they didn't have to struggle. This year they didn't have to sacrifice. This year this church stood up and stepped up and we became the widow at Zillifab to make sure the man of God was taken care 
mean, y'all don't like me no more. It's all right. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Here it is. Third point. God takes care of his preacher through provisions that are not explicable. You can't explain it. Can't explain ravens feeding him. You can't explain a widow woman. Here's the thing. When you get to the story and, and, and he gets there, just like God said, the woman was there, the woman was there, the woman was there. He says to bring some water. She goes there. She ready. She down with the water. Then he says, now when you come back, bring me a little whole cake. Y'all from Detroit, I'm sorry. Y'all bring me a little biscuit. Bring me a, bring me a biscuit. Bring me a biscuit. Bring me a biscuit. No, I forgot. I thought I would. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Whatever was I thinking? I'm from Ohio. I'm from the country. Y'all from Detroit. I'm sorry. Y'all know what a whole cake is. Bring me a biscuit, Lord. And she says, she says, man of God, I'd love to get you a biscuit. She said, but here's the deal. Here's the problem. I have two sticks. I'm about to make a little fire. Because I got a little bit of cruise, a little oil in the cruise, and a little meal in the barrel. And I'm going to make a sandwich. A sandwich for my son and I. Wait a minute. And we're going to eat it and die. And the man of God says, tell you what. If you will have faith and make mine first, you won't have to die. Jesus, have mercy. Okay, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. If, if you, because here, here's why, here's why. God said, I've already told her to take care of you. Y'all still didn't get it. She should not have been surprised when the man of God showed up because obviously God had already told her there's a man of God coming and your assignment is to take care of him. And now when he gets there, she wants to argue about what she got as if God hadn't given her explicit instruction on how to handle the man of God. I need y'all to send me some love because I'm preaching better than any of y'all are saying amen. But I'm so glad for the prophet. He said, look, I don't know what's going down. I'm as confused as you are. All I know is the God that told me to tell the king there be no rain is the same God that told me to go to the brook and ravens would feed me. And when the brook dried up and the ravens stopped coming, it was the same God that told me I got a widow woman in Zarephath who's going to feed you till this time. Okay, y'all ain't helping me. And the Bible says that when he got there, he told her, make mine first. And I promise you that the God who sent me is the God who will take care of you and me. And the Bible says that when she made that biscuit for the man of God, the cruise of oil never ran out. And the meal never ran down. Because every time she went to get some, there was a little bit left. Do I have anybody here that's been making it all a miraculous little bit? You can't explain it. How every month you still are making it. Every bill is paid. Every need is met. Would you high five a neighbor and say, neighbor, I cannot explain it. But he keeps on blessing me. And he keeps on making a way. Bless our lives. Bless our 
takes care of the preacher. He finds someone he can trust and says, I want you. In fact, he said, I didn't ask her, I commanded her. Woo! I commanded her. Take care of you. And until this famine is over, you are her responsibility. But she got blessed because the preacher showed up in her house. I know y'all love pastor. I heard y'all. But I kept sitting there thinking, why? Why? Why it gotta be so hard? Why does that be so tough for them? 30 years? And they still got to work for everything? And, and, and deny themselves? Why? When it's God's order, you didn't see it. Make mine first. Y'all live to offer? Tithe and offering coming? Take care of your pastor first. Look out. Y'all gonna swallow up like a frog. Look at me. Take care of your pastor first. It's the order of God. And when you bless him or her, then God will bless you. Are y'all in the room with me? Not only will you eat, but you got some cousins need to be saved. You got some aunties need to be delivered. You got some brothers and sisters hooked on something. And maybe the deliverance is waiting on your obedience. Because God's already told you what you want to do. So I got on a plane, tired as I could be to get here tonight. Because I had one word. God's going to take care of the preacher. Yes. He just may use you to do it. Yes. And if you have been the recipient of his ministry, then ministering to him yes. ought not be a problem. Yes. Now, I would tell y'all to turn this mic off, but some folk may be watching who need to hear this. Where's Con? And Con? I'm going to say something in love, right? You know I love you, right? And you know I love the whole family, right? Okay. Now, now be kind. Ain't like y'all ain't took care of a preacher before. All right. Come on, y'all. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Ain't like y'all ain't done it. I know what y'all used to do. Okay. That's true. That's true. Amen. 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 And if you did it then, you can do it now. Yes. Amen. So I'll be back, what, in 10 years? <laughs> you know, me off, I'll be back in 10 years. It's his 30th year pastor. I just celebrated 40 years last week at First Church. I said to, um, I might want to turn it off for this. I said to my officers, now next year, we ain't going to do this. Because First Church doesn't know how to stop. Mm -hmm. Lord, my Lord. They don't know. Obviously, they were not in school today. They defined stop. <laughs> the love they show, the gifts they give. I told them, we're not going to do this next year. In fact, I had to laugh. I said, the next time y'all do this, will be my retirement. Wow. Because they understand you spell love, G-I-V-E. Y'all ain't with me. You can't love and not give. And people wonder why First Church is so blessed. One of the reasons is because they've always taken care of their pastor. And I want to challenge you tonight. Now, if I'm out of order, Pastor, at the restaurant while I'm eating, tell me you are out of order, and I'll pay for the bill. 
I want to raise the offering. Now, can I raise the offering tonight? And there's some people here, God has already spoken to you about what you want to give. And there's some of you who God has been talking to you about what this church needs to do, and he only sent me to confirm it to give you courage. After 30 years, it shouldn't be this hard for you. I'm saying this in love. Well, you can keep it on. I'm fine. I'm fine. Child, being bad and black as I am, I say what I want to say. Please. please. What are they going to do? Thank you. No. I, I've only really come to confirm that he shouldn't have to struggle after 30 years. I listened to my nephews talk. My heart went out to them. They shouldn't have to see their mom and dad struggle all of their ministry. Our daughters, Dee Dee's in heaven now, never saw us struggle. Even when we were a small church, all they saw were the saints loving their parents making sure we had what we needed. And Dee Dee died loving the church, loving the Lord. Jossie loves the church. Our grandchildren love the church because that's all they saw. Mm -hmm. Caleb and Jay and these beautiful grandchildren should not always see them struggle. He don't want to tell you, but he can know them. Working them night shifts in. Come on, y'all. What are you, 59? 51? 59. You know, you know what day she is, right? <laughs> you, you can't do at 59 what you did at 39. Pop Reed told that story. I'm through. Pop Reed told that story. Wait and tell the story. It actually happened. I was sitting at the youth convention. Preacher came up to him, was talking to him, and Pop Reed came back to me. He said, son? I said, yeah. He said, you know what that man just told me? I said, no, what did he tell you about? That man just told me, he said, Ben, I can do anything now at 60 that I did at 30. He said, son? I said, yeah, Pop. He said, you know what just happened? I said, no, what? He said, one of two things. Either that man just lied to me. Or that man just admitted he didn't do nothing when he was 30. He said, I don't know which one it is. He said, he lied. Or he just admitted he didn't do nothing at 30. Next year, he can't do what he did at 30. Amen. And he shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have. I have said across the years, 50 folk can take, I told the leaders this, 50 folk can take care of the pastor if you prioritize the pastor. You can get all of them. Because I'm he, he got he got thousands of members, 50 people. I got friends in the Church of God in Christ don't have 50. And they get it real good. They be pounding them on Friday night. Pastoral night, anniversary, money to go to Memphis. Probably right. I have Baptist friends, child. They get their anniversary, then they go to the association, then they go to the state convention, then they go to the national convention. And they want their past, they buy them suits with matching shoes. And none of them live better than that man right there. None of them preach better than that man right there. So I want to challenge us tonight to start something. I want to challenge you, Top, that you commit, and I'll work with you. This is the last year. He's 59. On his 60th birthday, y'all will have a means and a method to get him off that job. So he can live to see his grandchildren grow up. Amen. And I tell you, I tell you about people. 
because I crisscross this country preaching preachers' funerals. And folk will work you to death, put your wife out the parsonage, find them another pastor, and not even call your name. And treat the new pastor better than they ever treated you the day they walk in the door. Somebody in B-Top said, it ain't going to happen here. No, say it ain't going to happen here. No, it's not. It isn't going to happen here. So we're going to start tonight. And Connie, you back there with that plate. How we doing this? Okay. Don't worry about the speaker's plate. I want to make sure we get them two big baskets. So this is the 30th year. I'm going to kick this off with $300. Since I got to get something with three in it. So I'm going to kick this off and off with $300. And I'm going to ask everybody who can, if you love you, and I know you do, don't, well, well, I love him, but I don't have a hundred. If, if you love him enough to give him a hundred, then you got it. I want everybody who can. Now, is there any amount we've asked for? Board, committee, anybody ask for certain amount? Sister, you be being asked for certain amount. Child, that was the problem right there. We should have asked for a certain amount. I need everybody who can to give me a hundred dollars. I'm giving three. So if I give three and ask you for one, I'm still beating you. Amen. Y'all not sending me no love. Now I was here one time, not here at this church, another church in Detroit, and I raised an offer, and somebody came to me and said, Don't be asking us for that kind of money no more. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. It's your he's your pastor. Amen. Amen. Y'all getting it together? Amen. All right. Now, now, um, bro, I am. I I had to give my sister money. Her birthday is Tuesday, and I'm gonna be out of town. So I gave her a bunch of money the day before I left church. What is your cash app? <laughs> give me your cash app, cause I'm cash strapped, messing around with Pam. She don't be walk in the morning. She need money. What's your cash at? David J. Rich, 1963. Say it again. David J. Rich. P.J. Rich. Okay. David Rich, 1963. That's the year you were born. P.J. Rich, 1963. Amen. Amen. Dollar sign. P.J. Rich, 1963. All right. Y'all love your pastor. Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let's stand. Father, I thank you for the word tonight. I pray it's been a help and a challenge to your people, a word of confirmation. I pray no one will leave here angry, but realize we love our man and God, and we can and will do better. So I pray you'll strengthen this wonderful church. Bless them as only you can. Multiply seed back to the soul and rebuke the devourer. And we give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. All right, I need some hand clapping, foot stomping, money giving music. I need some good music. I need money giving music. Can all the musicians in here? All right, where are they? First thing, Lawrence. <laughs> I can say that because my father was, was from Trinidad. Y'all can't talk about us, but I can. <laughs> All right, come on, bring your gifts. P. J. Rich, 1963. All right, come on, just bring it, just bring it.
I said on Friday night, um, several months ago, when they said they were going to do this, I didn't realize that we were able, we're able, we were going to be able to worship in the building. And uh, because of all that we have to do to uh, get the building ready and meet all the city requirements so that we can worship here, I really didn't feel like celebrating at all because we're right in the thick of the work. And but then it just came. It dawned on me, wait a minute. Jeff, it's been 30 years. You yeah, need to do this yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, to, to recognize that and to celebrate that. Um, I want to thank B Top uh, for being the kind of church that walks this walk of faith with yeah. us. Yeah. And I thank uh, our bishop for giving that reminder, although this is not uh, drudgery for me. I'm not, I'm not bitter. I'm not a complainer. Uh, my first, and I, I wrote this in the book, book. My first, my first ministry responsibility is my family. And so I will never be in the place where I'm begging in the church to pay my lease. Or to pay my, my gas for my car. Because first of all, I'm a husband and a father of a man. And I'm going to take care of my family. <laughs>
these are all our friends from the GFW in Detroit chapter. And I was asked to be a board member, and I, and I accepted. I prayed about it, so I'm a board member of the GFW in the Detroit chapter. I thank God for their support. I thank God for being a part of that ministry and what we are able to do in the gospel music field. Thank you so much, Pastor Hughley. I want everybody to give it up for Pastor
Father God, we thank you, Father God. We pray an edge of protection over each and every person under the sound of my voice as we all came out to celebrate the man and woman of God, Father God. Lord, we pray an edge of protection over them. We speak health and healing to pass a calm body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God. Lord, I, I pray an edge of protection. I thank you for health and healing for everyone under the sound of my voice as I plead the blood of Jesus. It will give us all chapter mercy as we leave this place, but never your presence. As we give you the praise, as we give you the honor and the glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.